Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of three in our series on cockroaches. So far we've talked about what they are and you know how they're put together. We even talked about cockroach milk yesterday. If you didn't tune into that, go back and watch that. Today we're gonna to talk about our relationship with cockroaches and how, well, it's actually way longer than you might think. And then tomorrow we're gonna to talk about a world without cockroaches, a cockroach apocalypse. A cockrocalypse, cockroach apoc, I don't know. If you think of a wombination, let me know. Either way, let's kick into it. Cockroaches are actually a pretty common household pest. We mentioned this very briefly earlier. 4,500 different species, we interact with less than 1% of them. It's the Blatella, Germanica, and regardless of species though, we still don't like them that much. It's not like we hate this species and we like this species. We kind of just don't like cockroaches in general. They're a nuisance, they're gross, and they have all these traits that I think just humans don't like. They're pretty gross, they throw up partially eaten food, they drop feces around, they discharge a nauseous secretion from their mouths and glandular openings, and it smells really bad. They're just nasty. They can also spread diseases, but that has to do with how cockroaches eat. They feed off of human feces and human food and Bacteria that lives in either of those can then survive in their digestive system for months or years. At that point, they can defecate, they can regurgitate, and they can spread that bacteria around, especially the more dangerous ones. Cockroaches are suspected of carrying some of these microorganisms that can cause diarrhea and dysentery and cholera and leprosy and plague and typhoid fever and viral diseases like polio. It's bad. It's really bad. And if all that doesn't freak you out and make you not like cockroaches already, or make you think they're super cool because they can carry all of those things and not die, think about it. Their eggs also carry parasitic worms, which is great. Those can cause allergic reactions like itching and swelling of the eyelids and respiratory conditions and dermatitis. Cockroaches, they're, they're like little superheroes. Plus, Cockroaches, interestingly, are omnivores. They have been known to eat human flesh. They can eat living and dead human flesh, which is really interesting, living human flesh. It's more likely in a really infested area, like on a ship or something, uh, where people have reported having to wear gloves so the cockroaches wouldn't gnaw on their fingernails and their skin. Weird and a nightmare. But all of that is either enough to make you love or hate cockroaches, depending on your personality. But sometimes the sight of them will make you cringe even without thinking, right? You'll get this like just feeling and Ugh! you know, but that's not because you're thinking, gosh, I might get dermatitis from those parasitic worms and my eyelids will swell shut. And I also might get diphtheria, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't, you're not thinking of all of the diseases. What you're thinking of is none of those things. You're just reacting evolutionarily. And our hatred actually goes way, way back. It's something that is kind of built into humanity. Thousands of years ago, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs included a prayer to the ram-headed god Knum for protection from cockroaches. The Greek scholar Diophanes suggested that if you took the guts of a freshly killed ram, buried it underground, that would help trap the cockroaches so you can later suffocate them or dump them elsewhere. In the 19th century, before we had chemical roach killers and things that could keep our homes free of these pests, you would stick a few cockroaches in an envelope with some coins, then you would leave those coins in that envelope and on the sidewalk. And whoever would pick that envelope up, you know, the roaches would follow them and go to their house. You know, people are mean. Basically, we've hated cockroaches for as long as human history seems to indicate. I mean, it's a little difficult to answer exactly when we started hating them because there are so many reasons to dislike this particular type of organism. They're erratic, they look gross, they move really fast and in a very weird way, and they appear to not be afraid of us. They're pretty ballsy. So they tap into this sort of evolutionary aversion we have to these smelly, slimy, greasy things. Disgust is a huge emotional response. It's one of the biggest drivers of behavior when it comes to emotion. Like what feels stronger to you? Being in love with somebody or an instantaneous disgust reaction, like somebody vomits on the bus or something, right? You react pretty much immediately. But cockroaches can't help this. You know, they, they don't wanna be hated. They're fast so they can escape their predators. They smell because the uric acid or like the nitrogenous waste 
in their body, that's their fat. It's for recycling. It's, it's, their texture is gross because of a lipid-based wax that is secreted by their cuticles so that they can hold in their water. Cockroaches, it's not their fault, they're nasty. They're just born that way. Perhaps the root of the fear, though, uh, is something called catseritophobia, and it can be traced back to a traumatic experience in life. So say you're four or five years old, you're at home, uh, your mom sees a cockroach and freaks out. Or a scary movie comes on TV featuring cockroaches, and they're supposed to be scary. And that fear is planted, and it stays with you. And you have it for the rest of your life, potentially. You can get over it. I mean, that can happen. In psychology, we would call that exposure therapy. Essentially, you would slowly expose yourself to the thing that you fear until you no longer fear it. It doesn't mean you're ever going to really love it but you're not gonna have that kind of instinctual fear response. So things like you would listen to this show <laughs> and listen to me talk about cockroaches and then maybe talk about them yourself and then maybe look up photos of them and then maybe go to the Natural History Museum and look at the cockroach exhibits, you know, things like that. Then eventually maybe you'll see an actual cockroach and you won't freak out. You can also go with technology, the augmented reality route where you can get virtual cockroaches and hang out with them like if you really want. We did a whole series on fears, and exposure therapy is a big part of that, so make sure you check that out as well. But cockroaches, it's funny, if you think about them more broadly, they may be more human-like than you think. One study found that cockroaches may have personalities and character traits, similar to you and me. They looked at the American cockroach and they studied its behavior. They did this by putting little chips on the cockroaches, putting them in a container with a couple of shelters, and they turned a light on at the top. We all pretty much know because of television that cockroaches don't like the light. They're gonna scatter and get out of it, right? And the camera recorded their actions for three hours. The chip recorded their location information to see whether they were in the shelter or not. You'd think because they don't like light that they would mostly just stay in the shelter the whole time, right? Three hours is not that long. But it turns out the amount of time that it took for the whole group to go into the shelter, that varied. Not all of them would scurry right in there at the same time. Researchers attributed this to differences in personality and behavior. There are braver cockroaches and they're cool with testing out this new really bright environment. Then there are more cautious cockroaches that run right into the shelter and they hang out and they want to see if things are safe. Basically, cockroaches sometimes make their own decisions. When you think of insects like ants, or even the cockroach relative, the termite, they're very hierarchical, right? They have a structured society. Bees, very structured society. Cockroaches don't follow a social hierarchy. They don't work that way. And that's kind of cool, right? We've had a long history throughout humanity with these insects. They've been around way longer than we have. We hate them. We sort of don't hate them. There's a lot of cool things to like about these strange insects, but they do share some interesting personality traits with us, right? But what happens if cockroaches never existed? They never existed at all. What would our world look like? We've got that episode coming at you tomorrow. Tell me now. You've been through two episodes of this. If you haven't been through two, go back and watch the first one before you come back to this one. But do you hate cockroaches? Are they gross? Are they the grossest of the gross? Or is there something grosser? What is a grosser bug? I challenge you, name one and tell me why it's grosser. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in to D News Plus everyone today. I think they're gross. I think they're gross. Get it out of here. I don't want to see it. Thank you. Thank you for watching D News Plus. Yuck. <laughs>